Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, the Austrian Raffhausen Bank, one of the last major banks in Russia to provide cross-border foreign currency transfers, is ceasing to offer this service now. Raffhausen Bank's Russian subsidiary was instructed by its Austrian parent company to comply with the new regulations introduced in the wake of the tightening of American sanctions. The note put out by the bank to its clients said, please be advised that with effect from the 2nd of September 2024, Raffhausen Bank will no longer be able to process outgoing cross-border transfers in foreign currency for all of its clients. Now, the prohibition applies to both individual and corporate clients, although an exception is made for a limited number of clients from large and international businesses. Now, I do like that caveat about large and international businesses, which probably include the Austrian gas company OMV, which buys the gas on which the Austrian country is so dependent. I mean, the bank currently facilitates cross-border transfers in euros, yuan, francs, yen, tings, drams, etc. to foreign financial institutions. Now, in the client to clients, it actually said, as of September 2nd, we will only be possible to transfer uh, rubles to countries that will accept them. I mean, these restrictions are a result of the decision made by the Austrian Raffhausen Bank International Group in line with the ECB's directive, that's European Central Bank, which as usual was following its orders from Washington and behaving like the obedient lapdog that it did. Now the previous announcement was please be advised as of the 10th of June 2024 the bank can no longer process outgoing payments in US dollars. Now Raffhausen was one of the last institutions to offer international transfers in dollars and euros following the uh, sanctions against Russian banks uh, back in 2022. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the <coughs> SEOBricksInsight.com. And to do that, you, you just click on the uh, uh, thanks button and make a small donation at the bottom of the screen. Everybody who makes a, a donation does get a thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all now personally anyway. Um, it's always great to, to, to receive a donation from you and it shows your thinking. Now do bear in mind over the last three years, the Austrian banking group Raffhausen Bank International has generated more profit from its Russian division than all its other subsidiaries around the world combined, according to its annual report. I mean, this year the Russian and Belarusian division was expected to generate yet another 1.2 billion euros of net income for Raffhausen, and that will represent around 70% of the group's net profit. I mean, for context, the economic activities of the other RBI branches are expected to generate only 500 million euros in net income. And that's according to analysts from the Financial Corporation Citigroup. I mean, in 2022, RBI's net profit in Russia alone was 2.05 billion euros, while in 2023, it was 1.3 billion euros. In 2022, Raffhausen Bank became the second most profitable bank in Russia behind only the Russian Savings Bank, Sparebank. Now, uh, uh, during 2022, it did account for approximately a quarter of all the euro transfers in and out of Russia. However, given the major fall in the use of the dollar in Russia's foreign trade and a number of other ways to conduct transactions, the impact's not going to be as dramatic as it would have been had it taken place back in 2022. However, the consequences for the Russian economy will be both positive and negative. I mean, it was one of the few banks left to uh, offer international transfers, but, you know, that provided a level of convenience for certain businesses and uh, citizens and the limited access to international financial markets. But the termination of cross-border transfers in currency could have a multifaceted effect for citizens and businesses. But there are so many other ways of doing business now. 
I mean, particularly in the digital thing, uh, mana, blockchain, etc. I mean, alternatives are, are there, and importance, importers and exports have identified already alternative payment channels for goods and services, although they might have been slightly reduced uh, levels of convenience and higher costs. Uh, they certainly haven't reduced the level of trade. I mean, also there's positive implications. I mean, the further de-dollarization of the uh, Russian and Central Asian economy, and it has increased the share of the ruble in international settlements. I mean, that's led to the strengthening of uh, the Russian currency, the ruble. I mean, according to the latest data from the central bank, it shows that the ruble accounted for a record 42.9% of payments for Russian imports with other countries being uh, currencies used like the Kazakh Tang, the Russian Turkish Lira and the Chinese Yuan. I mean, the Russian currency has been gaining ground in the country's import market for five consecutive months, with a further 1.2% increase in June, reaching a new now record level of 42.9%. Now in June, <clears throat> the United States introduced further sanctions targeting banks engaged in trade operations with Russia. So the ruble show <clears throat> was driven up by its use because the more the US tries to uh, do this, the more people shall start to use that. I mean, the ruble share is now being used with key trading partners in Africa, Europe and Central Asia. I mean, in Africa, for example, 54% of the trade uh, in June uh, was up from 44%, right? I mean, in Europe, it's now, they're paying 58% in uh, rubles, up from 53%, and that's the Europeans. And that's a historical maximum for both regions. Now, also, a further reduction in capital outflow <coughs> will be achieved as positive consequences across border transfers. I mean, there's already been a noticeable reduction in the figure for the year to date, according to the calculations by the National Research School at the Higher School of Economics. The net capital outflow from Russia in the second quarter of 2024 decreased by $10 billion, reaching $28 billion compared to the first quarter. Calculations include legal transactions, funds held by Russian citizens and companies in foreign jurisdictions. I mean, this reduction in uh, capital outflow could increase the amount of money remaining within the country, which will stimulate investment in national assets and the economy. However, <laughs> overtly strict restrictions could result in a shadow schemes and illegal transfers, but I don't see that as being a major problem. I mean, there's developments also uh, in the payments uh, explore new avenues for financial collaboration with the trading partners and in the various countries. And the potential benefits are the strengthening of the domestic financial market, the increased interest in digital financial instruments and national payment system plus the faster uh, evolution of the Russian economy. Plus we're awaiting the new BRICS payment system that will happen at the Kazakh summit uh, in October. So a lot to like, a lot to look forward to. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Please like and share and also comment. I love to get your comments and I reply to as many of them as I can. So please keep them coming. Thank you.